Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to TRS 2006. Now, I know I told you guys that we'd be working on Grizzly Peak. We'd do a double episode where we work on Grizzly Peak. Now, I, for whatever reason, for whatever told me to uh, turn the size of the texture down, I, I, I obeyed it, and that was stupid. So, eventually, I'm going to realize that and turn it back up. <coughs> But point of fact is, I had a dentist appointment, and uh, didn't have time to do a double episode of Grizzly Peak, so instead we came over to this uh, this low mountain over here, Bald Knob, I guess we're going to call it, uh, and decided to texture the hell out of this. Now, again, I only did this side because I'm lazy, and I cut corners, and we haven't worked. There's nothing on the other side. So, that's what this episode is. This episode is this side of the mountain. Uh, and I do go back and I look around and I see that we do have several more episodes worth of stuff, but I feel like these episodes where I sit down and do a specific portion are much more uh, straightforward and productive than uh, the, the ones that used to be, well, the ones that we used to do, where I would just try and talk and do the work at the same time. Now, I, I, I was listening to the Rooster Teeth podcast panel and doing some work on this mountain and, of course, just going to find little craggy areas where I could put this rock. This rock that I always use. Now, we do actually finish the side of the mountain this episode, so do not fret. It will all get done. Uh, even though I get sidetracked a little bit and wander off with the camera from time to time, uh, it's much better than, uh, also I, I started a tradition of waving my mouse cursor around whenever, uh, whenever I came upon it, one of those little lag spikes from the autosave. I figured there should be a rocky cut there, so I put one there. And then I continued over here, I grabbed, no, I didn't get that yet. I guess I went and I got the stone. Oh, wait, no, that's, uh, sorry, I did what I thought I was going to do. I went and I did that, and I put a little bit more of that there, because I think that area deserved a little bit more color variation. And frankly, the all of the mountains do, once you put this gray stuff on them, it kind of looks depressing. And with these, uh, with the way we're doing things with this color scheme, which we might change up for other mountains. Now, if you notice, the color scheme for the mountains has changed considerably since we began. Uh, not this section, but other areas of the map. If you look around Temeros, we had the, uh, oh, what was that? Like the dark and the stone, not the stone, the, the stuff I used, the craggy stuff, and a couple of other bits and bobs that we piled together into one square piece, and I just copy-pasted that all over the place. And that evolved into the Black Mesa Red Cliffs that are over in El Dorado Canyon. And that evolved into this. Uh, well, not evolved, but it changed into this because I hated the, the Black Mesa stuff so much. Now, I end up connecting that to there because I feel like it deserves to be there. See? Looks better already. Now... Much later, I'm going to realize that you can see behind the mountain from the track, so then I go and build more mountain. It's going to be a kind of guilt thing as we work on this, when I can tell that you can see things that you shouldn't see, that's when I'm going to go and fix them. Of course, some areas we probably won't go through uh, in any serious fashion ever again until... Uh, we actually start driving this route more significantly, and once again, that's gonna that's gonna have to wait until we get some actual production industries down. We're kind of at the consumer end of the map, except for trees, and of course, we don't have any of those industries yet, and we don't have anywhere to take the trees. So that's <laughs> that's that. Though perhaps, oh well, the multi-industry that's going to be at the farm isn't going to be connected to anything at all, anyways. And that whole area is going to be worked on when we actually sit down and do the uh, Temeros 2 portal, whenever that happens. Speaking of portals, uh, well, 
it's going to be a long way to segue into this because the Portals discussion is a long ways away from what I need to talk about first off, which is TS-12, Train Simulator 12, Trains with a Z, Simulator 12. I, in my infinite wisdom, decided to boot up TS-12 again. That's not the uh, infinite wisdom part. But I decided to boot up TS-12 again and got a little bit more into it, and actually, uh, I didn't build a route yet. I, there was one that I had built before, but I registered my serial number with Aron, or N3V. Uh, they gave me a coupon. I used the coupon to buy the T1s, which are cool. Uh, and from there, I wanted to use the T1s, went through a whole fiasco, finally got them working, thanks to some helpful uh, people over at uh, N3V. And subsequently started screwing around. Friends realized I started playing the game again, wanted me to do a multiplayer session, but the one that's in the game is kind of lackluster. So I went, I know what I can do, I can build one. So I started, started looking around on the maps to see what would be the easiest to make a multiplayer session on. I was originally going to do the Norfolk and Western, the Appalachian Steam, because it was cool, but there's a lot of distance to cover, and when you don't know where each thing in the route is, it's very difficult to build a session for it. I don't, I don't even hardly know how to build a session in the first place. And the, that was really the trouble. So I decided to settle for something easier, which was uh, the... I went on a route called the Springfield Industrial District. Now, the Springfield Industrial District is a small yard. Uh, well, not... It's, it's a decent-sized yard, I'll say. It's maybe six tracks uh, on the edge of a freight main and a passenger main, who, which are separated. They are different grades. Uh, passenger main is completely disconnected from the freight main. The freight main goes by this yard, intersects with the yard, uh, and then there's a branch line off of both of the main lines, uh, which, of course, still don't touch, and run to an airport. Now, the nice thing about the airport is it consumes goods. Now, the cool thing about that is, if you have trains coming in off the portals with full goods, and you try to race, in the, race the goods to the airport before the airport runs out of goods and the session ends, that makes for a good session, except it's impossible to do by yourself. So instead, I decided, hey, this would be the multiplayer session, and I built it into one. The only problem is, in multiplayer, the portals don't seem to want to work. The What actually goes on with the portals is what they're supposed to do to keep the, si to keep the situation challenging is to c produce trains at a constant rate. It's not a very high rate, but at a constant rate uh, that you have to manage. Now, you can let them bypass, which is something I set up. They're on an autopilot command, so they will drive past the yard unless you throw the switch to bring them in. Then, once they get in the yard, they will find the, the track mark to end the autopilot and stop, and then you can take control of them. And that's when you disconnect. You pull them apart for the full goods cars, you give them some empty goods box cars, and you send them on their way, so that you keep the yard clear for the next trains to come in, and uh, you don't if you overflow, and then you can't get any more cars in, and can't get the trains passed, and you make a mess, that's your problem, and you have to deal with that. If you derail, there's a five-minute timer on the stuff, you have to deal with that. Uh, among various other things. It's really just a race to get the goods to the airport before the airport runs out of goods, but I wasn't sure how hard it was be would be, so I didn't set up an end scenario filter because of it. Uh, in future revisions, that's something I want to do. But it's not something I'm willing to do yet. Because I need the scenario to actually work first. And for that to happen, the portals need to work, and I need to spend more time figuring out exactly why they won't. They just don't seem to want to produce trains. Which is a pain. For the multiplayer session, I was tempted to change the portals so that you could send the trains with the empty cars in and have 
them come out of the opposite portal full. But that defeats the yard is slowly going to overflow unless you get these trains out of here thing. There are a few things I want to do to make the scenario harder, but it's out there right now. It's called Cargo Conundrum, and you'll hear me talk more about that on the podcast. You'll hear me talk more about some other stuff in a second that I'm about to talk about on the Terminus podcast, which is coming out tomorrow. Let me take this moment to apologize for this video being late. If it is, which it probably is going to be considering what I'm doing right now, which is probably as this video is processing, trying to... Uh, you run the Minecraft server as well, because I just realized I promised the guys uh, put the Warships map up, forgetting that I had to process this video because I hadn't yet done the audio for it, and therefore uh, were, was screwing everything up. So this is when I realized that I didn't do the back of the mountain. So I go ahead and start doing the back of the mountain, because if I don't, then it will never get done. Once we get this whole area in, that means we actually have this whole tile filled, pretty much. And I can ignore this end of the route. Pretty much everything on this side of the river, or everything on this side of the river is effectively done for the Susquica to Caps Junction portion of the layout. Which is good. But everything on the other side of the river is not done. Uh, there are textures that need to be done, of course, on Bear Mountain. Or Grizzly Peak, rather. Bear Mountain, Jesus Christ. I passed so many Bear Mountains on the way home from uh, Cleveland. But we uh, went by Bear Mountain. Why am I talking about that now? Okay, so. Uh, Grizzly Peak needs to be textured. Uh, the area next to it where Grizzly Lumber sits needs to be textured. Uh, the... Stuff, the mountain opposite that, I'm pretty sure. Where, is there, is there a thing there? I'll see it if I go over. Uh, yes, the mountain opposite Grizzly Peak needs to be textured, textured as well, I believe. Yes, yes, it most certainly does. On the other side of Skyfall Ridge, there is an area where the two-foot gauge goes down into the valley, that needs to be terrained, and it needs to be textured. A lot of it doesn't need terrain, but all of the stuff on Skyfall Ridge, uh, from the from the tracks that lead into Skyfall Ridge and the, uh, what I call it, the Skyfall Cutoff, I guess? Or the gri the Caps Cutoff, the, uh, the Grizzly Cutoff. There we are. I need a name for it. Uh, everything uh, near the tracks... Nah, everything on the tracks of the the Skyfall Ridge route, which is the old track uh, that leads off scene, as right now it leads off scene, uh, doesn't need to, or rather does, from there, no, from the three foot narrow gauge track down to the two foot narrow gauge track. Sorry, I keep getting hung up with the names because I always forget them, and I should really write them down. I need to put track marks with them down. Everything from the two. Three foot, down the two foot, into the river, needs to be textured, and then we're done. Because the rest of that depends on when Arturo is built, and once we build Arturo, then we can start determining what the terrain will look like for the two foot gauge that connects Susquica and Arturo. Right? I need to get the map out. Ah, here's the map. Since when did the two-foot gauge go through Arturo? Oh yeah, it does go to Arturo, because that's the cargo transfer point from the two-foot gauge to the standard gauge. The logs and the gilpin ore. Uh, now, we're going to have two-foot gauge somewhere else. Uh, that leads to smelteries. I don't know where. I don't know where yet. Where did you send the Gilbinor? 
I'm so sorry. I need to take a better look at the North Bay County route and see exactly what the industries are and what they do before I really get a handle on what to do with the uh, the gold ore. Because we're going to have those ore cars. And they're going to be coming out of the mines in Index. Which isn't a town on the map. And they are taken through Susquica. And from there... I suppose they go to Arturo, where they're transferred onto standard gauge cars. Wait, can you put Gilp... Are there any standard gauge cars that, tape, that take Gilp and Ore? No, I don't suppose so. What does that get refined into? I really need to take a better look at what that does. Of course, this is leading towards parts of the route where we have not... That we haven't touched yet. Maybe I can... I think I know where I can put a town... It's between Arturo, Meast, and Port Charles. There's a rail line that goes up into the hills. It follows a river, and there is a town. Or there's not a town, but there is a junction where I guess there would be a town. But I didn't put one. It's at a lake. And it is the head of the Charles River, I guess. That leads down and exits next to Port Charles. See, there's so much to this, to this route that I've done and that I've yet to explore. But I fixed I fixed up the back end of this mountain. Of course, I later determined that it's not enough and go and fix the rest of it. But I go through here with the little the little tiny brush, the little non-sensitive brush, and clean up all of these little fiddly bits that I that are left over. from me mishandling stuff. Now, I remember last episode, or whatever episode it was, talking about the most boring stretch of track to do. And what's definitely going to be the easiest stretch of track to do is going to be between Fempton and Vale. I'm probably, I probably said that. I probably came to that conclusion due to the fact that it's a Rather long, but dead straight track. By the way, I understand that this route is very model -y. It's not very realistic. Of course, it doesn't have realistic distances or particularly realistic grades. Uh, but I try to keep up this system of commerce so that you can do basically whatever you want. If you sit down with the Temeral Svale and Anaconda, you want to run a coal drag? Go ahead. You want to run some high-speed boxcars? Have fun. Uh, you want to run a mixed freight, or you want to go into the mountains with a steam locomotive? Enjoy yourself. You want to take a tiny little shay and uh, pioneer up some steep grades just to grab a little bit of coal? That's fine by me. And if you want to run express passenger from one end of the map to the other, that's just fantastic. And, of course, you could do the whole thing. You could take logs from Olerston, bring them to Modico, bring the lumber, or bring the wood chips to Meast. Wait, what? How does this work? Yeah, bring the wood chips to Meast, bring the wood chips from... Uh, bring the wood chips to Archero, bring the goods to the airport up at the high end of the map. You know... That's how this all works, really. I just had an idea for Temerosta Portal. We could be intersecting with another railroad that drops off boxcars or something. Uh, because it would make sense that there is a changeover point there. Uh, or maybe maybe the high-speed boxcars will be run up through Scra Scrag Cap and over to Imperic I wonder, I, I suppose that could work. Oh, look at that. That's something funny. Uh, you guys missed it, I guess, because I wasn't paying attention, but that's something I really wanted to highlight. Now, if you go back, you'll see that I accidentally screwed up with my cursor placement there, and the rails decided to attach themselves to the river spline. I really wanted to point that out because I found it so unusual and, frankly, kind of ridiculous. 
But then it, that just occurred to me, if you can attach anything to... If you can attach rails to any spline, could you theoretically put the train down on the rails and then drive it on any spline? I wonder. Maybe we could get something that... Maybe we could get a train pretending to be a boat. Or a train pretending to be a car. I think that'd be kind of interesting, don't you think? As a little test? Maybe if I remember to do that at some point. So we have that little green dot that marks the top of the mountain, and of course I'm expanding outwards from there. I do this edge of the mountain here, but I found the real flaw with building half a mountain. And the problem becomes very quickly that you can see the edge, and whether or not you'd be able to see over it, you see that very unusual shadow that the edge is casting uh, upon itself, I suppose. And, of course, it doesn't look legit. So, that's why you have to go build the backs of the mountains. As much as I hate doing it, it's important. I noticed that just out of the blue and fixed it. So I come and do the elevation deciding spline. See, I was losing my mind when I was trying to record this because I kept forgetting which... Uh, which tab did what. I kept trying to get to the rails or the spline elevation tool through somewhere else random. I don't know what I don't know what I was thinking. But there we go. We're just patching all this up. Finally getting the back of the mountain in here. Once we get this mountain done, we'll have one more mountain done. Of course, it won't all be textured. The back end will not be textured. Because I'm far too lazy to texture the whole thing. But when the time comes, I will be texturing the back. Once we uh, decide what we want to do with the rails that go from uh, Caps Junction to Modica, which actually is a decent length. I'm trying to keep everything proportional and not go insane. Uh, when I built this, I suppose I should have assumed that the distances would be much greater. But, uh, of course, therefore creating more work for myself, but in a, in a sense making it a little bit less chaotic with the grades, and, or ridiculous. Oh well. Once again, the worst thing is going to be Winder Stow to Thames. Or, uh, what's the other one? Didn't I say there was a 0 to a 5 somewhere? There are only, oh yeah, 0 to 5. Port Charles to Hapston Cliffs, but that's quite a distance. That is almost the distance uh, as the crow flies from Temeros to Galgora, and the plan calls for a lot of squiggles. Also, a meeting at the town of fill in the blank here, because we don't have a name for it. I just found out there'd be a town there. Wherever the uh, factory to process the, the gold ore is. By the way, that's a question. Sorry, I yawned. Um, the question is, really, why not build the refineries right where the whatever is being harvested. I, mean, I know in real life uh, there are a lot of factors that contribute to that, which is, uh, as I started writing down my ideas for the most complicated train simulator or tycoon game thing that I started doing and never finished, because I got distracted with having to write the pass. Speaking of that, I need to do more vocals. But uh, not speaking of that, uh, there'd be much more with the reasoning behind things, but blah, 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 blah. In the in locomotion, you can put a steel mill steel mill just about anywhere. So when there is a coal mine and an iron ore mine basically right next to one another, why not instead of putting a coal mine and iron ore mine, put a self-sufficient steel mill 
Right there. Because then you have to don't, you don't have to truck anything anywhere. See, now that'd be great if it worked. Of course it doesn't. Because the game doesn't actually know where coal and iron ore deposits are until a coal and iron ore, coal or iron ore mine decides to build itself in a random spot. And then voila, there is a coal or iron ore deposit there, or an oil deposit. And, of course, the managed forest is another story entirely because, well, it's a managed forest. It was created. But in the World's Greatest Train game, the world's most expensive and detailed train simulator, in the most fantastic game of Tycoon, the forestries will be out there in the middle of the wilderness. To build tracks to them, you will have to cross rivers, span gorges, uh, climb heights, and survey your way through the land, blah 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 Okay, yeah, words. Uh, essentially, resources, unless they are easy to get to, they will be hard to get to. I know that's quite a, a statement that doesn't make a lot of sense uh, from a standpoint of Competitiveness, I suppose. Uh, or pointfulness. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. It's not a statement that you would... It's a statement that is self-encapsulating. As like, it's either good or they aren't. Either good or it isn't. As, there's no argument there. But what I'm trying to say is, it will be a rare case that a resource will be easy to find. Uh, and of course... As time goes on, the resources will be harder harder and harder to find. And, therefore, you'll have to bring your railroad into, quote-unquote, well, not quote-unquote, because completely, into uncharted territory in order to find the richest, the riches. As it is in real life. Of course, man things like managed forests and uh, factories or places where essentially we create something from nothing like farms, won't be in the middle of nowhere. But in the case of, say, a gold mine, or a coal mine, or an iron ore mine, uh, just one of the many things that you can find, uranium, tin, lead, I was making a commodity list at one point or another for that game, and it was, it was incredibly long, of course, because I'm trying to mimic real life. But, uh, yeah. Minerals like that, of course, will get scarcer and scarcer, and eventually you'll have to go very out of your way in order to transport them. Now, something I've realized is that something I don't like, actually, about the way these games function, uh, games like Locomotion, there comes a point where money is no object, and that you can build whatever you like. Now, part of that is because the world is so small, and the distances between places aren't completely ridiculous or realistic to the point where it costs an incredible amount of money to build the track between them. But it's also that I feel like things at the beginning of the game... Not that they're underpriced, but that the game undersells itself in the amount of money that it costs to start a railroad. Maybe as time goes on, things should be escalatingly more expensive based on how much money you have. Or things like tunnels and bridges should be increasingly more expensive. Now, because, frankly, there's no reason in the world anyone would make a wooden bridge in locomotion. The cost difference does not warrant it. However, if it did, then upgrading systems would become even more imperative. Now, one of the things that also gets me about locomotion. Now, I'm just kind of uh, getting upset at locomotion, and there's really no reason for me to. It's a fantastic game. But there are always things that I wish it was more realistic about, and the other one is time passage. It goes about a day a second, and I hate it when stuff goes ridiculously fast, because I like to... Well, frankly, I like to know how much time it takes to do something. In Kerbal Space Program... I like it that it tracks how long it takes when you take when you go from Earth to or Kerbin to Mun 
or from carbon to duna, or from carbon to joule, it takes an incredible amount of time. Uh, even in Kerbal's, sh Kerbal's shrunk system, uh, it's it's ridiculous. And but it's completely correct. That's exactly how it is in real life. Now, uh, you can time accelerate, yeah, but that isn't. That's beside the point. The point is that it would have taken in that much time, and in that much time, a lot of other things can happen. Now, the thing about the world's greatest train game, I guess, whatever I wanted to call it, the uh, ultimate. It was called the ultimate train game. That's right. Uh, is when you sit down, sit down to build some track, you first go out there and survey the track based on, first of all, you can check out maps that people have made on the area, which are, of course, randomly generated. Uh, or you can... See, we're capping this mountain now. I didn't know how I wanted to do it. I go and find something and then don't like it. So I go and cap it with something else. But um, it turns into a sand dune for a second. I don't know why. You go out and survey the land, figure out exactly what's there, and then you start figuring out what you want to do with this track. You start surveying the track, you see the gradients, you see the costs, all the embankments that you can, have to, build, uh, or avoid, uh, bridges if any, tunnels if any, cuts, things like that. It's supposed to be realistic to a T. Which, you know, of course, is kind of a niche thing when you think about it. But frankly, I'd love it. I'd love it to death. But uh, you spend this time surveying, and then, of course, your reward is, all right, let's build this track. Now, you requisition the rail, you get loans, you get the the, the rail and ties, of course, the gravel for the ballast. Uh, you can pick your different weights of rail. So you look at that sexy mountain. Doesn't look great, does it? Oh well. It's that's what we're gonna get. Uh pick the kind of rail, pick the kind of ballast, I guess, if there are really different kinds of ballast. Uh, I suppose if it's more modern, you're a you're able to choose between the standard plates and spikes or the swirly metal bits. See now we go over here and look at Grizzly Peak. Come over here, that area needs to be textured. The area back there might want some mountainy, mountainous. Uh, that area on top there actually needs to be done as well. And all that stuff between the three foot and two foot that I just ran my cursor along needs to be textured as well. So we've still got a lot of work to do, but really it's only a few episodes worth. Because if you look, all this is shiny and new and done. All the way up to that bridge. Lovely. Go us. Looking at that to make sure it didn't get connected. And uh, as I was saying, let me just round out my, my talk here. You pick the kind of rail, and then you set your workers to work. You hire the workers, and then you set them to work. And you will get your completion date, your estimated date of completion. Now, you can speed up time, which doesn't speed up the workers... You could theoretically speed up the workers by a couple of different things. Incentives, pay raises, uh, threats, I guess. But in the end of it, you can either fast forward to the end of it or skip to the end of it. If you fast forward, you get to see whatever has happened in real time. Uh, not in real time, but in fast forward time, of course. If you skip to anything that happens along the way you will be notified about once you essentially come to, once you're back. But that's it. Famine out.